Let us make Africa the tree of life. Africa is the tree of life. My name is Kato Mukasa. I'm here for country profiles. And today, something very special is Kenya. We are profiling Kenya in the studio. Is, uh, is uh, Brian Kabeko, a Kenyan, of course. Today, this is his show. And uh, uh, Hassan Baya. And of course, uh, I want to encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel right there on your screen it's human tv africa this is our youtube channel and also our facebook name is human tv africa but also please write to us send to us an email an email send to us an email at info info at human tv africa.com or send us a whatsapp message at that very number our communication officer brian Kabeko will be able to respond to you and all your queries will be answered well today let us go into it it's the Humanist profiles and of course country profiles. We're looking at Kenya. You're looking at Kenya, a very beautiful country. I should say, hey, I'm part of Kenya. I've been to Kenya, I've worked in Kenya, and of course I have strong attachment in Kenya. So yes, Kenya is part of me and also part of Kenya. And of course I'm an African, therefore I belong to everywhere in the world. Now Kenya is a beautiful country, one of the uh, countries well endowed with the uh, um, natural resources, as you shall be seeing, a country that has so many tourist destinations. In fact, Kenya has more tourist points than Uganda, than any other country in East Africa. Kenya has more tourist destinations, tourist points than many other countries in East Africa. In fact, one of the leading industries, sectors that bring in money in Kenya is accommodation. It explains to you how important Kenya is in terms of uh, the tourism. And of course, Kenya is the powerhouse for East Africa. It's a powerhouse in terms of economy. It has a stronger economy than Uganda. It has a stronger economy than Tanzania and of course than the rest of the countries in East Africa. So Kenya is the powerhouse in terms of economy. Kenya is the powerhouse in terms of uh, uh, tourist destination. And of course, in terms of marketing, Kenyans know how to do their marketing so, so well. So as a person coming from Uganda, I give credit to Kenya for so many things, including the way they market their country. Kenya has uh, 53 million people as we speak, and quite a big population, but also Kenya is slightly bigger than Uganda, but slightly smaller than um, Tanzania. Now, Kenya is a British colony, therefore Kenya speaks English as an official language. But unlike Uganda, Kenya has another official language, which is Swahili. That's why you hear this theme song for uh, uh, Human TV Africa in Swahili. Kenya speaks Swahili, Tanzania speaks Swahili, and Ugandans are catching up. They're teaching Swahili in Uganda. I speak a little bit of Swahili, but of course, Kenyans speak it as a, uh, more of a homegrown language, uh, more of a national language. Now, Kenya has a rich uh, connection in terms of uh, uh, colonialism, in terms of imperialism. And of course, uh, it was a colony uh, for uh, Britain, but also 
speaks their indigenous language. And of course, Kenya is so popular in terms of literature. I've been mentioning about uh, uh, people like Ngudi Wathiongo and so many others I read as a student uh, from Kenya. Kenya has been able to contribute so much in terms of uh, uh, education, in terms of literature. Some of us who love poetry, who love uh, uh, novels, uh, Kenya made uh, a great contribution. And of course, Kenya has been a very stable country. Yes, a very stable country in terms of no coups. And this is a plus for Kenya. Uganda has got how many presidents? Eight presidents. Many of them go through gun violence. Kenya has made a record just with Tanzania that leaders go through voting. You may say voting may be bad, but let's leaders go through voting. In Uganda, leaders go through the barrel of the gun. And this is where Kenya beats us as a people in East Africa. And here, when I say Kenya, I talk about Tanzania because they have peaceful transfer of power. Regardless of the violence that may happen in Kenya, which is a red mark there, but at least they change leadership through general um, uh, elections, which is also a good thing for Kenya. And of course, Kenya has over 70 ethnic groupings, 70 ethnic groupings, you can imagine. 70 ethnic groupings, and of course the largest one is the Kikuyu. The Kikuyu is the largest, then the Luo follow there, there's the Kamba, there's the Kisi, there's the Nelu, and of course others, other uh, ethnic groupings. Of course there are Kalenjins and others. But when I was in Kenya, what I observed was that there are so many Kikuyus, and of course the time I was in Kenya, they were in power. So there are so many Kikuyus, they have so much influence, of course the, the rules. And also quite many, the Kisi, the Meru, the Kambas, the Kalenjin, and of course the Masai down there. So quite a, a country with diversity, but also a very peaceful country. Uh, you can enjoy going to Kenya. I want to invite our producer to please give us the photos and we see the images from Kenya, starting with the maps of Kenya. Let us look at Kenya, how geographically located it is, the neighbors of Kenya, what's being done in Kenya. Remember, it's agriculture. It's tourism, it is industry, it is their standard gradual it is their cost that actually markets Kenya. Look at this map. This map gives you basically a bit of Kenya. Look at what is in Kenya, the vegetation, of course, the animals there. You can see the elephants, the lions, the zebras, and of course, the natural vegetation of Kenya. Kenya is so lively when it comes to those things, the Masamara and that. Now, look at the map. That's the uh, the, the, the flag for Kenya, a very beautiful flag right there, red, black, and green. And of course, with our spears as uh, a people from East Africa, we love spears, we love fighting. Now, these are the neighbors of Kenya, Somalia, right there. There's an Indian Ocean, which makes Kenya a powerhouse because of the access to the world through the sea and the oceans. Of course, uh, Uganda there as the neighbor. There is uh, Somalia, there's Ethiopia, Sudan, and of course, the other countries that surround Kenya give them access to the world. Give me more maps, please, and much faster as we do this. Now, Kenya is rich. Kenya is rich when it comes to minerals. Now, look at this map. This map tells you the mineral distribution in Kenya. Briefly, it has all these minerals. As you can see, it has coal and ore, copper, and of course, it has gold. Not that it has gold, coal, and ore, copper, titanium, uh, nibrium, and rare earth, soda ash, prosper, uh, chromite, uh, limestone, manganese, detomite, uh, uh, gemstones, gypsum, natural carbon dioxide, and so many others. You can see this map shows you what Kenya has. Now, these are the tribes of Kenya and how they are distributed. I told you that the largest one is the in central, who are the Kikuyus, right there in central, you can see the red there. And of course, uh, the Luos, yeah, the Luos uh, come in there, and the Kisi there, you can see, bordering the, the central there, and taking part of the eastern and the coast. Then you can see the Kalanjin, right there in the Lift Valley, quite many. And of course, there are Somalis, there are Meru Embu Kamba, just mixed within the Jalus there. And of course, um, you can see the mixed others coming in, the Taita Taveta, the Mijikedu, and so many others. Now, these are the main ethnic groups of Kenya. I told you there are over 70. But here, 
on my map, they are talking about 101lasttribes.com. These are the tribes you can see. They are quite many. They are the, just the Maasai, Kisi, Luo, Pokot, Somalis, Samburu. Yeah, I, they are the Samburus. I, they have uh, very, very, very decorated women down there. Samburu area. They are the Meru, the, 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 the Gikuyu, of course, there. And all these areas, the Kalanjin, you can see this map gives you the Ruo, the Ruya, of course, the Itesots, and of course, uh, uh, others, uh, others, uh, uh, people or tribes in Kenya. These are tourism areas. I told you Kenya is a powerhouse when it comes to tourism. It has quite a number of tourist spots. I've been to Kenya and I've enjoyed visiting some of these places because they have the Lake Tukana there. They have um, uh, uh, so many good places selling getting uh, so near there. Mombasa is a good one, Mount Kilimanjaro, uh, Tanzania, uh, the neighbor there, and others. But within Kenya, it's a little diversity. Look what the people in Kenya, I love their colors, I love the, 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 the their shouting colors. I should say, very eye catching blue, red, yellow, green. You know, there's the way they miss their colors, those women. And the men who are proud of the Maasai is the way they jump. Hey, I love the Maasai. They walk in those kind of clothes. They are holding some small <laughs> jelly cans, vending stuff. They wear traditional. The Maasai, I think, are one of the most proud people in Africa to be proud of their culture. The Maasai, they walk in their traditional attire in the city. Uh, cities of Kenya, you'll find them walking with quite these ladies, quite, quite very beautiful ladies down there. Uh, in Kenya, and I love them for loving their kind of culture, the way they dress, the way they love their regalia, the way they, do, they, they love their traditional attire. They are really Kenyans. You look at the Kenyans and see these are Kenyans. Look at the Kenyan men, those traditional Kenyan men, uh, the Maasai, uh, the, the Kalenjin, the, the Ruo, of the Kikuyus, the way they dress, it's very distinct. They love that kind of jumping. They are good at that kind of jumping. And they are really athletic. Kenyans are really athletic. If you look at world records in terms of uh, uh, marathons, and uh, Kenyans have been doing so well. Kenyans have been doing so well on the world map when it comes to marathon. The country is a bit hilly. The weather is quite good in some areas and quite harsh in other areas. You can see how mountainous, how hilly rural Kenya is. That's why people are very good at athletics because they keep on exercising in this kind of weather and the hills, which give them a physique that is unique for much of the sporting world. These are the Kenyan ladies, of course. I told you Kenyans are so good when it comes to sports, especially especially uh, athletics, especially running long distance uh, 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 marathon. They are so, so good. Kenyan men there, the way they love to wrap themselves. Remember, there are Somalis in Kenya, Somali Kenyans, and of course, other tribes. The Kericho area where tea is grown, I've been there several times. Actually, even doing some interviews among those farmers right there in Kericho. Tea growing is a very big industry in Kenya. The rural part of Kenya, you can see part of the uh, huts uh, these guys build in the rural areas of Kenya. Very unique. And of course, uh, very, very comfortable. If you may ask me, the, the, the uh, tourist attraction is quite big in Kenya. I've been there, I've seen uh, their elephants, I've seen their lions, the zebras, all these animals. Please give me the animals very fast. All these animals are part of Kenya. The rhinos, the zebras, the lions, and the antelopes. All these animals can be found in Kenya. All these animals, the rhinos, uh, quite, quite, quite impressive animals. The zebras, the antelopes, and all these other animals. There, there are so many tourists. I tell you, Kenya, and so much money through tourism, I should say, and so much money through uh, tourism, much of the time. And of course, these are the presidents of Kenya. You can see from independence, uh, it was the Domo Kenyatta, Domo Kenyatta from independence. Then Daniel Ab Moy took over from in 1978. And of course, Mike Kibaki took over in 2002. I was there during the time of Mike Kibaki. And of course, I enjoyed a few things in Kenya during his trainer. And of course, uh, Uhuru Kenyatta uh, took over. He's not the current president. The current president now is uh, Ruto. Uh, Ruto is the current president now. That's the current president of Kenya. And of course, Kenya is moving forward regardless of challenges here and there. 
regardless of some bit of unemployment here among the youth, which is a common problem in Africa. There are good spots in Kenya, like the Home Bay, Homa Bay, accounting. Uh, the environment is so good. The roads are very good in Kenya, I should tell you. Yes, I used to travel in a bus going to Kenya, and we used to travel in the night, and I tell you the roads are very good. Mombasa is a very good um, a uh, good uh, destination for uh, commerce, commerce, commerce. And of course, Nairobi is a very beautiful city, I should tell you. Nairobi is a very beautiful city. I've been there quite a number of times. I've been at Hilton Hotel, one of the hotels I've gone to and enjoyed staying there. With, uh, I think Hilton Hotel, one of the best hotels right there. I've been to Kisumu, the very good uh, uh, country city. Uh, uh, very good there. there. There is some bit of development in Kibera Salam. The list I got is that they are building flats there. They are trying to reduce all the slumming areas of Kibera. One of the largest slums in the world is that place called Kibera. Right now, they are building modern buildings right there in Kibera. There's Malindi Coastal Town, which is also very impressive. I've been there, I should say. There are many tourists in Malindi, and of course, there are many mixed, 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 mixed marriages in Malindi, and of course, in Muratos, right there in Malindi. And of course, uh, you can see. Nairobi, from this vantage point, there are quite a number of good, impressive buildings. Nairobi is very clean, much of the time, and of course, very vast and uh, really very, very interesting uh, for you to go there as a tourist. It's a good, uh, good, good capital city, really. Uh, lovely to be in Nairobi. Nairobi is a good city. I should vouch for it and say, hey, go to Nairobi, go to Mombasa. Mombasa is a clearing house clearing center where you go and clear your goods from Europe, from wherever, from Japan. Mombasa is the destination I've been there. And of course, it makes so much money for Kenya, Mombasa alone, because of the harbors there, because of the ports there. And of course, the Nairobi Express uh, way right there, which has been well built, by the way, on a very high standard, well, well built right there in Nairobi, the Nairobi Express way. And of course, the standard gauge railway, which was first of all, the first of its kind in East Africa and the others are catching up. Kenya gave uh, the lead in building this standard gauge railway and of course, Tanzania took on the offer and of course, Uganda is following suit. Now, this is good development in Kenya, as you can see, uh, these uh, ladies there working for the standard gauge railway in Kenya. Transport issues are being solved in Kenya. It's becoming a very, very, very good destination for tourists. I've told you, I've been to Kenya so many times. I've worked in Kenya. So I can vouch for it and say it's a, a good country, warm people, and of course, a, a nice way to spend your money as a tourist going to Kenya. Thank you so much. That is Kenya, a profile, and that is Katum Kasa for you. It's Man TV Africa. I want to encourage you to please subscribe to TV Africa and receive this and more of our episodes. See you in the next one.